Some very exciting things are happening at Tesla at the moment, especially at their two new gigafactories that are about to open. I believe I've worked out exactly what is going to happen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, and you are watching the channel that films more videos about electric cars than anyone else. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to all you new subscribers. Awesome to have so many new subscribers. Welcome to all of you. Unreal to see you all. Welcome back, everyone else. Now, big shout out to our Patreon supporters. Thank you for supporting the channel. It's really fantastic. It means a lot to me. I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon account if you want to jump on there and support the channel. That would be fantastic. So Tesla's Model Y structural battery pack is referenced in an updated owner's manual for the Gigafactory in Austin, Texas. So what exactly is going on? Will they be using 4680 battery cells? And obviously we've got two new factories here and Model Y is going to be built in both of those. So what's going to be happening in both of those? Because as far as I can tell, two different things are going to be happening at Berlin. One different thing at Berlin versus Austin, a different... In other words, if you buy a Tesla Model Y in America, you're going to get a different car to if you buy a Tesla Model Y in Germany or Europe. Now, media reports all over the place say that following an update, Tesla's Model Y owner's manual now features a direct reference. By the way, this is the owner's manual for the Model Y coming out of Austin, Texas to the vehicle's structural battery pack. As indicated in the document's new version, Model Ys are equipped with structural batteries, have a slightly different jacking procedure as their lift points are in slightly different locations compared to the vehicle's previous iterations. Now, the inclusion of the structural battery is exciting to me. I don't know about you, but to be honest, I think we're at a moment in time where we're going from having a vehicle which is really good to a vehicle which is just next level. Now, the structural battery references the Model Y's owner's manual bodes well for the rollout of this really highly anticipated innovation, especially if you're a Tesla fan. To be honest, if you are just a fan of engineering, then you've got to say this is some really cool technology here because we're combining this with the Giga, Giga castings as well, structural battery pack with Giga, Giga castings, and you're going to have a car that's going to be lighter, quite a lot lighter. In fact, I think by my estimates around about 250 kilos lighter and obviously potentially have longer range at the same time. This is quite a big change here to this vehicle. So, I mean, realistically, if you're going to buy a car, a Tesla Model Y, you'd really hope you'd get this new model. Now, for one, this information in Tesla's new owner's manual shows that all the cars coming out of Gigafactory Texas will have the structural battery pack. So what batteries will it use? While reports are saying that these vehicles will be equipped with 4680 battery cells. Now I'm fascinated to know what the range is going to be with these new cells and with this new pack. I think it's definitely going to be at least 10% better than the current model, which means the Tesla Model Y will be without a doubt a significantly better version in 2022 versus the 2021 model. Now, recent aerial images from the Gigafactory in Texas show that Tesla Model Y test bodies with spaces for what appears to be a structural battery as well. Now, Tesla's structural battery is actually built into the structural platform of a vehicle, and this paves the way for several advantages that Tesla can tap into. According to the company during its Battery Day event in September 2020, structural batteries would reinforce the Tesla Model Y's body and the chassis, therefore increasing its strength and its safety, and of course, decreasing the weight to some extent. We don't know how much yet. Now, the efficient use of Tesla's 4680 cells in structural batteries could also help the Model Y boost its driving range while optimizing production costs and increasing structural rigidity, increasing handling, those things at the same time. It's really kind of multiple benefits going on here at once from two different innovations. Now, obviously, the Tesla Model Y will be the first Tesla vehicle that becomes available with Tesla's new structural battery pack and new 4680 battery cells. There's been a lot of naysayers saying it's never going to happen. The 4680 battery cell, it's, it's a joke and it's never going to work. Well, I believe we're about to see them very, very soon. Now, what other vehicles will have the structural pack? Well, Cybertruck, of course, they're not going to be able to get the kind of range they've been advertising for the Cybertruck without the structural pack. Obviously, it's part of the whole vehicle itself. So Tesla are going to need an incredible amount of 4680 battery cells for the new Cybertruck. In addition to that, 
the Tesla Semi as well, that's gonna need them. But honestly, I mean, would Tesla continue to sell the Model S and the Model X as their flagship products without 4680 battery cells or structural packs? Well, I think that's probably a change that we made this year on the Model S and the Model X as well. Now, what about Gigafactory Berlin? The current Model Y option or until Tesla can start producing 4680 in Gigafactory Berlin, they won't actually change the vehicle over to the new model with the structural battery pack and 4680 cells. So all indications currently are that 4680 battery cell production in California is sufficient for the initial ramp up of the Tesla Model Y and that Tesla believes the 4680 production in Austin will be sufficient by the time the vehicle production exceeds Cato Road 4680 production, by which time I'm guessing that Panasonic will be able to build more batteries and pro probably Tesla as well in Austin, Texas with its battery facilities there as well. Now, the Berlin factory is expected to ship with 2170s, so the older form factor, the smaller size battery that isn't tabless, but they'll be using the existing design of the Model Y, switching to the structural battery pack when 4680 production is ready to go. Now, if you're not too sure if you've forgotten some of the details of the 4680 battery cell, the advantages of the pack and the cell, well, Tesla's redesign of the battery, the cathode and the vehicle frame translate to an expected improvement of 56% in Tesla's cost per kilowatt hour. That is the most important factor to reducing the cost of a car, the cost per kilowatt hour, right? Now, currently BYD claims that their costs have reduced to around 90 US dollars per kilowatt hour. That means that BYD can sell their electric cars at a low price, in fact, on par with their gas vehicles. And you've seen an insane surge in the sales of BYD's electric vehicles. One of the key reasons for that, price. Now, getting back to the 4680 cell, Number one, there's a 14% improvement in cost per kilowatt hour coming from the change in the cell form factor. Number two, there's an 18% improvement in cost per kilowatt hour as a result of the 10 times manufacturing footprint reduction and 10 times manufacturing energy consumption reduction. The new dry manufacturing process enables processing the active battery powder material directly into a film. The new manufacturing process is based on Maxwell Technologies' proprietary proof of concept process. Number three, 5% improvement in cost per kilowatt hour coming from the increased utilization of silicon in the battery cells. Number four, a 12% reduction in cost per kilowatt hour coming from improvements in the cathode material. Number five, a 7% improvement in battery pack cost per kilowatt hour as a result of Tesla's new integrated vehicle design. Tesla redesigned its vehicles using new front and rear castings that integrate with the structural battery pack. To accomplish this, Tesla developed a completely new alloy to enable casting of some of the largest components ever casted in the automotive space. In fact, they probably are the largest. These bolt directly into a new structural battery, eliminating the need for redundant parallel elements in Tesla vehicles. So there you have it. Even if you're not a Tesla fan, you should be excited by this because this these kinds of innovations are gonna force other companies to innovate as well. Now, I've mentioned a few times that there's six different companies in China who will be using similar castings like Giga Castings that they've bought the castings from Hydra. Those orders came after Tesla, obviously announced that collaboration. So you can see clearly these kinds of things are already leading to innovation from other car makers. And that is good for all of us because eventually what happens? Well, everyone has to make their cars better or they fall behind. So you get a better product in the long run. Let me know what you think about what's going on with these Tesla vehicles. Would you consider a Tesla Model Y with a new structural pack and 4680 cells? Personally, I've got to say, it sounds pretty good, pretty compelling. Thanks for watching the channel and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.